Welcome to part three of Robert L. Belknap's journey through the brothers Karamazov. Now we have ended our focus on the inherent structure and will instead focus on the sequential structure via the plot. The first chapter in this plot part is about the juxtapositions in the storyline. Juxtapositions are those things that happens a lot in the story to intensify the effect. Belknap delves into the dynamic interplay of juxtapositions within the brothers Karamazov, emphasizing how Dostoevsky crafts a narrative that propels readers through a spectrum of human experience with its rhythm and motion. He highlights Edward Garnett's portrayal of being engulfed in a turbulent flood of emotions and ideas while navigating the novel, underscoring the intense pace and depth of the narrative journey. Central to Belknap's analysis is the technique of juxtaposing similar materials to enhance the novel's thematic depth. He explores how Dostoevsky juxtaposes like events or themes, such as the series of Nadriv incidents or Mitya's trials, to amplify their impact and facilitate a deeper understanding and engagement with the novel's core issues. This sequential ordering not only aligns with the chronological flow within the novel's world, but also accentuates the thematic resonances across different narrative segments. Moreover, Belknap points out the juxtaposition of opposites as a technique to highlight contrasts, which can either sharpen the intensity of an event or provide a reprieve from the narrative's tension. The insertion of comic relief through characters like the buffoons or stark contrasts drawn between moments of grace and human folly serve to juxtapose the sacred with the profane urging readers to find deeper meanings amidst life's contradictions. The transition between juxtaposed elements, according to Belknap, is often subtly engineered, moving the reader's focus seamlessly across different aspects of the narrative without overt awareness. This skillful manipulation of narrative flow exemplifies Dostoevsky's mastery in guiding the reader's attention and emotional investment throughout the novel. In the Brothers Karamazov, the act of bowing serves as a nuanced juxtaposition, illuminating the complex interplay of reverence, mockery, and spiritual depth. Through distinct instances of bowing, Dostoevsky contrasts the characters' intentions and beliefs, offering insights into their moral and spiritual landscapes. 1. Monks and Zosima. Their mutual deep bows symbolize genuine spiritual respect and interconnectedness, emphasizing humility and the sanctity of divine grace within the monastic community. 2. The Karamazovs. Fyodor's exaggerated bowing injects mockery, contrasting sharply with the monk's sincerity. Even stiff politeness and slight awkwardness highlight his estrangement from true spiritual engagement. 3. Zosima and Dmitri. Zosima's profound bow before Dmitri, a troubled soul, showcases an act of unconditional compassion and the potential for redemption, standing in stark contrast to the superficial gestures of others. These acts of bowing encapsulate key themes of the brothers Karamazov, juxtaposing the sacred with the profane and sincerity with pretense. Through these moments, Dostoevsky explores the depths of human respect, the quest for spiritual truth, and the contrasting paths of his character's spiritual journeys. Belknap's analysis of the brothers Karamazov delves into how Dostoevsky manipulates the reader's memory and expectation through his narrative structure, creating a rich and interconnected experience that unfolds over time. This process is crucial in a novel where the linear sequence of reading contrasts sharply with the complex, layered content being presented. The novel, likened to a folded row of type two miles long, demands an active engagement of memory and anticipation from the reader. Belknap illustrates this with the early scene in the epilogue where Alyosha visits Katerina Ivanovna, prompting recollections of numerous earlier events and characters, from Mitch's trial to Ivan's illness. This not only revives the reader's memory of past scenes, but also sets the stage for future revelations and confrontations. This meticulous weaving of narrative threads relies on the reader's capacity to recall and connect disparate moments, enhanced by Dostoevsky's strategic placements of references and reminders. For example, the mention of a past meeting between Katerina Ivanovna and Grushenka primes the reader for their imminent, significant interaction. 
bridging hundreds of pages and several months of publication time. Furthermore, Belknap points out how Dostoevsky employs both the revival of past scenes and the introduction of new information to manage the reader's focus and expectation. The insertion of seemingly minor details, like the departure of a Moscow doctor, serves multiple purposes, filling chronological gaps, setting up future narrative developments, and maintaining the flow of the story. Dostoevsky's narrative strategy, as highlighted by Belknap, exemplifies the author's skill in guiding the reader through a complex psychological and spiritual landscape. By controlling memory and expectation, Dostoevsky not only enriches the reader's understanding of the characters and their journeys, but also deepens the engagement with the novel's broader themes. This technique underscores the novel's exploration of faith, morality, and the search for meaning, inviting readers into a more profound contemplation of their own experiences and beliefs. In the intricate narrative of The Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky employs foreshadowing through Captain Snegiryov's discussions about his family, which provides a nuanced foundation for their more detailed introduction later in the novel. These instances are exemplified in two quotes. In Book 4, the introduction to Captain Snegiryov's family is subtle yet significant. Captain Snegiryov, in a conversation with Alyosha, mentions his family in a manner that hints at their challenging circumstances and complex dynamics, yet with an underlying tone of deep affection. Allow me to finish introducing myself, that is to introduce my family, my two daughters, and my son, I mean my little dear sir. If I should die, who would care for them? And as long as I'm alive, who except them gives a damn for a repulsive old man like me? A family is a great arrangement that God has provided for men like myself, because even a man like me must have someone in the world to love him. This early mention sets a backdrop for the later, more intimate portrayal of the Snagiryov family in Book 10, hundreds of pages later, where the familial bonds, struggles, and the cramped yet cherished home life are vividly brought to life. By the window next to the woman stood a rather plain-looking girl with thinnish red hair, poorly but quite neatly dressed. When Alyosha entered, she too gave him a look of unconcealed disgust. On his right, also sitting beside a bed, was another girl, a pitiful creature of about twenty. She was a hunchback, and, as Alyosha learned later, her legs were withered. Her crutches leaned against the wall behind her bed. The extraordinarily beautiful, gentle eyes of the crippled girl looked at Alyosha with infinite serenity. Through these carefully crafted scenes, Dostoevsky not only foreshadows the deeper exploration of the Snegiryov family, but also emphasizes the theme of human dignity and resilience amidst adversity. This narrative technique enriches the reader's understanding of the characters and their significance within the broader tapestry of the novel, illustrating Dostoevsky's mastery of storytelling and character development. Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov skillfully employs foreshadowing to weave a rich narrative that captivates and guides the reader through its complex layers. From the outset, with the mention of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov's tragic demise, Dostoevsky sets a tone of anticipation, layering future events through characters' ominous actions and dialogues, such as Mitya's threats or Smerdyakov's sinister hints. Invitations from characters like Grushenka and Lys to Alyosha act as foreshadowing, bridging current events with anticipated ones, and maintaining suspense across the narrative. This method allows Dostoevsky to manage multiple narrative threads, keeping the reader engaged with both ongoing and forthcoming events. Dostoevsky also intrigues us with more enigmatic forms of foreshadowing, such as Zosima's bow to Mitya, enhancing our curiosity without revealing specific outcomes. The reactions of characters to these moments amplify our own engagement, utilizing their astonishment to fuel our anticipation. The novel plays with the reader's expectations, satisfying them to maintain a cohesive narrative pattern or strategically frustrating them to introduce suspense and surprise. The introduction of characters is carefully managed to either slowly build familiarity before they fully enter the story 
or to suddenly introduce them and gradually reveal their significance, ensuring they remain memorable. Through these narrative techniques, Dostoevsky keeps central characters like Mitya vivid in our minds, even during their absence from direct action, by subtly embedding reminders of them throughout the narrative. This not only keeps the narrative's emotional and thematic continuity, but also deepens our investment in its unfolding. In delving into the nuances of foreshadowing within The Brothers Karamazov, we uncover a subtle but profound instance in Book 5, Chapter 2, through the character of Smerdyakov. Here, he expresses a deep-seated resentment not just towards his personal circumstances, but towards the entirety of Russia. Can a Russian peasant resent an educated person? No, he can't, because he's too ignorant to have any feelings at all. But ever since I was a small child, whenever I heard people say a wee bit like that, I felt like smashing my head against a wall. I hate Russia and everything about it, Maria. This declaration foreshadows the violent culmination of his pent-up animosity in books 8 and 9, where Smerdyakov's actions against his father, Fyodor, and his own subsequent suicide reflect not just a personal vendetta, but a broader repudiation of the society that Fyodor epitomizes. Smerdyakov's expressed desire to smash his head against a wall at the disparagement of peasants underlines a hatred that extends beyond personal grievances to a symbolic rejection of the Russian societal structure. His patricide and suicide can be interpreted as acts embodying this profound disdain. This exploration of Smerdyakov's remarks offers an insight into his complex motivations, suggesting his violent deeds are deeply rooted in a contempt for the societal norms and values represented by his father. Through this instance of foreshadowing, Dostoevsky intricately weaves a narrative thread that enhances our understanding of Smerdyakov's character and his critical role in the unfolding drama, emphasizing the depth with which Dostoevsky probes into familial and societal dynamics. Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov intricately employs inherent relationships and sequential links, weaving a complex narrative that both engages and challenges the reader's expectations. A key example is Alyosha's notable absence from the novel for 261 pages, including books 8 and 9. Dostoevsky bridges this gap with both direct reminders and more subtle cues that resonate with inherent relationships within the story. For instance, Kalganov's reaction to Mitya's arrest mirrors Alyosha's earlier emotional turmoil, serving not just as a callback, but as an echo that brings Alyosha back into the reader's consciousness. Dostoevsky also uses anecdotes, both minor and crucial, to embed reminders and foreshadow events within the novel. The legend of the Grand Inquisitor, while often considered a digression, is intricately connected to the broader narrative through thematic echoes and character parallels. Characters like Kolya Krasotkin, who embodies traits similar to the Grand Inquisitor, serve as both parodic reflections and reminders of the legend's themes. This interweaving of narrative elements not only maintains the reader's engagement, but also deepens the novel's thematic exploration. Moreover, Dostoevsky's narrative technique involves the gradual introduction of characters, creating a sense of familiarity that enriches their eventual appearance. This approach, combined with the sudden introduction of unexplained characters, builds anticipation and curiosity. Once characters are introduced, they either remain central to the narrative or fade into the background, depending on their role in the unfolding story. In summary, Dostoevsky's manipulation of inherent relationships and sequential links in The Brothers Karamazov not only directs the flow of the narrative, but also enriches its thematic depth. Through careful structuring and the nuanced development of expectations, Dostoevsky crafts a narrative experience that is both compelling and thought-provoking, demonstrating his masterful storytelling and deep understanding of the human psyche. In The Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky masterfully employs character transformations and their subsequent impacts on the narrative's direction, revealing the profound interconnectedness between character development and narrative progression. This is exemplified in the spiritual journey of Alyosha, deeply influenced by the teachings and wisdom of Elder Zosima 
as shown in this quote. He was not in the least troubled by the fact that Zosima stood before him, an isolated phenomenon. It makes no difference. He is a saint, and his heart knows the secret of regeneration for all, the power that will finally establish the rule of truth on earth. Then all men will be saints and will love one another, and there will be no poor and no rich, no mighty and no humiliated. All will be the children of God, and the true kingdom of Christ will come. This is what Alyosha felt in his heart. The elder's guidance and the spiritual ideals he embodies shape Alyosha's worldview, leading him towards significant growth and the practice of universal forgiveness. This transformative journey is highlighted when Alyosha reflects on Zosima's influence, understanding that the elder's spiritual power and the miracles attributed to him are manifestations of divine grace through unwavering faith and love. Alyosha's belief in Zosima's saintliness and miraculous powers signifies his spiritual evolution, influenced by his deep connection to the Elder. Dostoevsky intricately maps the complex web of relationships within the Brothers Karamazov, mirroring the multifaceted connections found in the real world. This network of connections, ranging from the emotional to the societal, forms the backbone of the narrative, influencing the characters' interactions and the story's progression. At the heart of the novel is the murder of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, around which familial, social and financial ties intricately entangle. However, focusing solely on this event to understand the novel's structure may limit our appreciation of its depth. Instead, Exploring the novel's various settings and character interactions provides richer insights into its complex world. Places in the novel, like Zosima's cell or the Lonely Crossroads, significantly impact the characters, revealing deeper layers of their psyche and relationships. Money serves as a crucial link among characters, transitioning from a mere economic factor to a vessel of emotional significance. For example, the emotional transformation of Mitya and Katya's relationship from a financial transaction to a complex web of desire, guilt and love highlights Dostoevsky's exploration of deeper emotional connections beyond mere social or economic interactions. This narrative complexity extends to the emotional dynamics among the main characters. The central emotional conflict, often viewed as a love triangle or an Oedipal struggle, is just one facet of a broader pattern of relationships characterized by a mix of aversion and attraction. This pattern encompasses the three Karamazov brothers, Dmitri, Ivan, and Alyosha, and the three central female characters, Katerina, Grushenka, and Lisa, forming a hexagon of emotional ties that drive the narrative. As the story unfolds, the initial complex structure simplifies, with characters aligning into pairs, signaling a move toward resolution and emotional clarity. With Fyodor, the Pole, and Smerdyakov eliminated by death or disrespect, Lisa is devoted to Alyosha, Katerina to Ivan, and Grushenka to Dmitri. But finally, we pass this straightforward emotional landscape as well. Dmitri goes to jail, and both Lise and Ivan gets brain fever and hallucinations. This leaves us with three main characters at the end, Grushenka, Alyosha, and Katerina, characters who outlived the connections in the world shown in the novel. In The Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky artfully showcases the complex web of relationships and their impact on the narrative, drawing attention to the myriad ways in which individual actions reverberate through the lives of others. This complexity is vividly illustrated in the actions of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov, whose seemingly whimsical decisions reflect deeper layers of character interaction and thematic exploration, as highlighted in the following quote after Alyosha had visited his mother's grave. But when Mr. Karamazov heard about the episode, his reaction was quite unexpected. He all of a sudden donated a thousand rubles to our monastery for requiem masses to be said for the soul of his wife. Not for his second wife, though, not for Alyosha's mother, the poor, crazy woman, but for his first wife, Adelaida, the one who used to beat him. Then, later that night, he got drunk and started abusing the monks to Alyosha. Through this action, Fyodor Pavlovich's donation and subsequent behavior towards the monks 
reveal the intricate layers of his relationships, especially with his son Alyosha. His choice to memorialize the wrong wife and his flippancy towards spiritual matters underscore the tangled mesh of respect, mockery, and unresolved feelings that characterize his interactions with his family and the monastery. This incident not only serves as a window into Fyodor's complex psyche, but also demonstrates the novel's deep engagement with themes of memory, guilt, and the sacred versus the profane. In characters who shape the causal pattern, Robert L. Belknap delves into the nuanced causal web woven by Dostoevsky in The Brothers Karamazov, showcasing how characters initiate and become entangled in the plot's complex movements. Key moments, like Ilyusha biting Alyosha without a clear motive, trigger deeper narrative developments, emphasizing the unpredictability of actions and their consequences. Adelaida's impulsive marriage to Fyodor Pavlovich spirals into a series of events affecting their descendants, highlighting the profound impact of personal decisions. Smerdyakov, portrayed as a motiveless malignity, acts without clear reasons, pushing the narrative into darker explorations of evil and free will. Mitya, caught in the narrative's crossfire, acts as a pivotal point of reaction, his indecisiveness reflecting the internal struggle between desire and morality. Ivan, despite his efforts to remain detached, finds himself inevitably drawn into the fray, illustrating the inescapability of familial and societal ties. Likewise, Fyodor Pavlovich's whimsical and erratic behavior injects unpredictability into the plot, affecting its course in unique ways. Belknap's analysis unravels the intricate causal dynamics at play, inviting readers to ponder the deeper themes of responsibility, free will, and the interconnectedness of human actions. In The Brothers Karamazov, Dostoevsky intricately weaves a web of character actions and their profound impacts on the unfolding narrative, a theme expertly analyzed by Robert L. Belknap in characters who shape the causal pattern. This complexity is highlighted in the compassionate act of Grigory and Marfa, who take in an orphaned child, born of stinking Lizaveta and christened Pavel, later known as Smerdyakov. This moment encapsulates the unforeseen consequences of moral decisions. Grigory rushed back, sent Marfa to help Lizaveta, and himself went to fetch an old midwife. The baby was saved, but Lizaveta died at dawn. Grigory took the baby boy home, told his wife to sit down, put the little boy into her lap, right against her breast, and said to her, This is a child of God, an orphan. He is everybody's kin, and ours more than anyone else's. Feed him and weep no more. In embracing Pavel, Grigory and Marfa's act of kindness sets in motion a series of events that underscore the unpredictability of actions and their long-term consequences. Pavel grows up to become Smerdyakov, the very individual who later perpetrates the murder of Fyodor Pavlovich Karamazov. This chain of actions exemplifies the complex causal patterns Belknap discusses, revealing how the characters' decisions, driven by compassion or malice, intricately bind them together in a narrative marked by redemption, betrayal, and the search for moral clarity. Smerdyakov's journey from a child of compassion to the architect of his father's demise underlines the novel's exploration of nature versus nurture and the deep-seated ramifications of familial bonds and societal neglect. In parallels between chronological and inherent connections, Robert L. Belknap delves into the nuanced manipulation of time and causality in The Brothers Karamazov. He reveals how Dostoevsky's characters can distort both chronology and causation, creating a narrative where responses to events may be significantly delayed or even preventive, thus enriching the novel's thematic depth and character arcs. A key example is the phenomenon of delayed sensory response, akin to Lewis Carroll's whimsy, which is mirrored in the spiritual journey of characters like Zosima, whose embrace of grace comes long after his initial exposure to it. This delayed effect of grace, akin to a seed needing time to bear fruit, is pivotal for understanding the transformations of Alyosha and Mitya, marking significant personal realizations. Dostoevsky also reverses chronological order, 
presenting characters' reactions to events before the events have actually occurred. This technique challenges traditional narrative flow, emphasizing the novel's exploration of fate and foreknowledge. It creates a hallucinatory effect, particularly evident in Ivan's encounters, that serves to underline the philosophical inquiry into the interconnectedness of all existence. Such narrative strategies not only contribute to a deeper understanding of the character's spiritual and moral journeys, but also underscore Dostoevsky's thematic focus on the gradual, often intangible influences that shape human lives. Through Belknap's analysis, we see how the manipulation of time and causality in the brothers Karamazov serves as a profound exploration of grace, redemption, and the universal interconnectedness of human experience. In parallels between chronological and inherent connections, Robert L. Belknap illuminates the intricate layers of Dostoevsky's The Brothers Karamazov, revealing how the novel's narrative structure and thematic essence are deeply intertwined through the character's experiences and philosophical inquiries. A pivotal example of this narrative technique is found in the Legend of the Grand Inquisitor, where Ivan Karamazov recounts a poetic yet philosophical tale to his brother Alyosha. The Grand Inquisitor falls silent and waits for some time for the prisoner to answer. The prisoner's silence has weighed on him. He has watched him. He listened to him intently, looking gently into his eyes and apparently unwilling to speak. The old man longs for him to say something, however painful and terrifying, but instead he suddenly goes over to the old man and kisses him gently on his old bloodless lips. And that is his only answer. This moment transcends the chronological progression of the narrative, creating a parallel between the inherent connections of characters' philosophical struggles and their emotional and spiritual journeys. The silent kiss in the legend of the Grand Inquisitor also serves as a key example of how Dostoevsky uses chronological and inherent narrative connections to explore the profound impact of personal decisions, the struggle between free will and determinism, and the quest for spiritual truth. Through this analysis, Belknap underscores the novel's exploration of the profound, often ineffable aspects of human experience, emphasizing the enduring relevance of Dostoevsky's masterpiece in probing the depths of the human soul.